Hey, this is Michael Jones with I'm Jerry Buden. Today I'll be talking about the Raspberry Pis and connecting it to the lap dock. Now, why would I want to do that and what is a lap dock? Now the lap dock was this docking station for a special phone called the Droid Bionic Lap Dock. Now there are a bunch of different versions meant for different types of phones. We have the Droid Bionic Lap Dock and we also have the Motorola uh, Atrix 4G Lap Dock. Shows different phones, but to me they look exactly the same. The actual hardware of both devices, and this is the actual device. Um, and basically, the reason why you'd want to get this is because uh, you want something to connect your Raspberry Pis to. I've had a problem for a while now that I had these Raspberry Pis, and I just wanted to see what's going on on them. Have a keyboard, mouse, and video all in one device, and not have to connect it separately to monitor and keyboard and mouse every single time. Although they might be wireless. I still just wanted to have one device to view it all, and even computers, I want to be able to have a device to just be able to have a mouse, keyboard, and video all in one, and this solved it. This is called the lap dock. Originally when this lap dock was made, it was meant for just this phone, and it was meant to be able to show your whole operating system on this device. It's kind of a Linux operating system. So to dock your phone and to use your phone on a bigger screen, that's what it was created for. But with certain cables and adapters, we were able to hack it and be able to connect your Raspberry Pi to the lap dock and thus having a keyboard mouse video for your Raspberry Pi which is super convenient all in one device. Now it's branded under two different phones. The Droid Bionic lap dock um, for the Droid Bionic which is this phone and then the Motorola Atrix 4G lap dock which is for this phone. As far as I could tell they're both the same exact thing. Uh, they use the same exact pins and I can't tell the difference. I made a video on it. So the reason why I wanted this is because um, I didn't want to buy the expensive next dock or the phone book, which cost well over $150 for each one. Um, the next dock touch cost, I think $350, which is more expensive than a lot of laptops. Whereas this device, depending on where you get it, you can even get it for as cheap as $30, $40 because it is made in 2012. So I'm sorry, it was made in 2012. Uh, both of these devices were made in 2012. And people think that it has no value, so they're trying to sell it for as cheap as possible. Um, they retailed for, I believe, 500 together with the phone. And that's pretty expensive, and it's actually made very, very well. Um, as you can see here, here, this is where they put the phone in. And over here, it's really just a keyboard, video, and mouse. There's actually no like software built in, except for, I believe, the battery light indicator, which I'm going to click on right now. So, uh, sorry. There we go. As I can see, it's full battery. And here is a, it's a mouse, it's a trackpad. And the keyboard is actually quite nice. It is a pretty small screen, honestly. However, it is very, um, it's a very nice screen. And we'll show you how to boot it up and how to connect it to the Raspberry Pi. I got this device on eBay for $37, which is a great price, um, seeing as how the quality is very high and that all the other um, alternative devices cost over $300. The person I bought it from thought I was silly selling it, buying it uh, such a outdated device, and I thought they were silly for selling such a great device for so cheap. So let me show you how to set it up. You obviously need a Raspberry Pi and three different cables. This method will not involve any soldering. I will show you what cables. This is a regular micro cable. Um, try to get a higher quality one so that way uh, you can get a lot of power. This cable is a micro USB to a regular type A USB. This is micro HDMI to full HDMI. Here is the micro USB to full USB. And here is the micro HDMI to full size HDMI. And this is the date of me making the video. I'm going to take these out of their packaging and I will show you. These two end connectors will go right on here. As you can see, they both fit nicely together. However, if yours are too wide, you might have to shave them down using a grinder or something, a sander, in order to get them to fit. But on the left side is the micro USB. So that USB and micro and micro HDMI on the right, two regular HDMI. This is for power. I don't know if this port will give adequate power for the Raspberry Pi 2, 3, or 4, but for the 1, I'm pretty sure it gives enough power, so I'm going to use the Raspberry Pi 1. However, if you need more power, you might have to use a power bank or plug it into the wall. Or you can use Pi Juice or um, there are a bunch of other uh, batteries. Uh, portable batteries for the Raspberry Pis. This method is the simplest because it requires you to not have to solder anything or to cut any wires or 
anything like that. However, um, you won't be able to have power and everything in one cable. So I saw some of the other videos where this cable also provided power um, to the device, but you had to cut the cable. So now we're going to plug in the USB to this USB port for power for the Raspberry Pi. Now I would only recommend this for the Raspberry Pi 1 or the Raspberry Pi 0. The Raspberry Pi 2 possibly could work well, but the Raspberry Pi 3 and 4 will not be able to run off such small amount of power because this probably does not you know, supply more than one amp. And that works for this one, uh, for the one and possibly two very well. But for anything above that, I don't think it would. So you need to use a separate power cable um, and a separate uh, charger. You can use a Pi Juice or things like that, portable charging. Or even a power bank could work very well. Obviously a higher end one that could provide 2.4 amps. So first we plug in the power. Now you'll notice the Raspberry Pi is not powered on because once the lid is open, that's when the power is supplied. Until then, it's not. Plugging in the HDMI. Now after those two are plugged in, now you can open the lid. Okay, open the lid. And hopefully it should work. Yes, it will. And it's powering on. Very good. As you can see here, Raspberry Pi is starting. And this is the Pi 1, so it's a little bit slower. But it should still work. For some reason this is running incredibly slow, but it is working. Okay, there we go, Pi Desktop. And we are booted into Raspberry Pi OS. It's the new operating system, not Raspbian anymore. And now we can plug in this USB cable. For some reason, when this is plugged in earlier, it doesn't boot. I think maybe since it's supplying power, it creates problems, I don't know. And as you can see, it's working very well. The Raspberry Pi 1 only has two USB ports, so this is very convenient because now I have a second USB port. Images are very sharp, uh, much better than my old monitor. No internet. Okay, and now I could type. As you can see, it's working. When I type, the things are showing up, so that's good. The touchpad works whether I tap. So yeah, tapping or clicking the button over here. Now if you click this twice, the touchpad is going to be turned off, or it should be. Hold on. There we go. Touchpad is off, and now when I do this, nothing happens. Okay, so I uh, hope that helped. I'm learning some new things over here. If you click the function together with the brightness buttons, it will actually make it brighter and less bright. I'm going to try to do it with one hand so that way you can see. As you can see, brightness higher and brightness lower. And volume also goes up and down. However, I cannot reach with one hand, so. Okay, update. The volume goes up, but it doesn't go down. Never mind, you just have to click it a little harder. Okay, so I filled up a USB stick with some stuff. Let's first see if I can actually be able to transfer files from here. And would you look at that? I can actually view the files on this flash drive that's plugged in. So this works as a hub as well, which is great. Okay, let's see if the audio works. I'm playing with VLC Media Player. This is no copyright sound, Tobu. And it totally works, and it gets pretty loud too. Whoa, I did not expect the speakers to be this loud. Okay, pretty awesome. Okay, that's it for this video. I highly recommend buying this product. Um, also, when you close it, it will power down your Pi like just cut power to your Pi. So if that's a problem and you don't want to cut power like that, then you have to shut off and you cannot close it. It will not like go into hibernation mode unless you open this up and you know do some funky stuff. So uh, um, that's it for this video. I just wanted to, I didn't say how many amps this is. However, I can do a test if someone's interested to see how many amps it is. So I hope this helped you. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Hi, this is an add on to the review. So great news that I got this Raspberry Pi working. Um, having the USB plugged in, but only plugging in the USB afterwards with this converter and with this converter, and also the power running separately from power. Um, the thing was, I was getting a little bit annoyed that I needed uh, to keep the Raspberry Pi so close. So I ordered a, an extender for the HDMI, and I also have a USB extension that I'm actually going to test right now. So I used the USB extension, which was great. It was a nice USB extension. However, I wanted to try to, um, fix two problems over here with it being short and also uh, splicing the wires like people spoke about. So what I did was, as you can see right here, I'm going to try to get a good video of it. Um, we have the uh, green and white um, are connected, that's the data, and the red and black, which is power, I disconnected. 
So let's see if this cable even works, and if it works, do I get to plug it in the whole time, or can I just plug it in afterwards? Okay, plugged in the USB beforehand. As you can see, it's plugged in. Open the lid and power on the Pi. And it's working. Now it is working, however, I do want to make sure that keyboard and screen, uh, keyboard and mouse are going to work. And keyboard and mouse work. Well, at least the mouse does. And now the keyboard works as well. So, as expected, um, the other USB without having the splice wire is powering the Pi a little bit, which is causing it to, um, I guess, loop boot or something like that. And um, that way, when I actually booted it, it wouldn't boot properly. So, you don't want to do that. Um, you want to just have data cables connected to that when you're booting it up. Um, I guess that's an option. Um, I'm going to maybe even connect this part to power like other people did so that way I can use power from this device as well. That'll be pretty cool and maybe I'll try that.